able to uh, bring that to my attention. Because again, you know, sort of the first step in getting this down is really having a good command of just the basics of CSS, you know. And again, that's like, that's, I, I mentioned that before, that having a good separation between HTML and CSS is sort of like ground zero. Everything builds on that. So we want to make sure that you really have a good fundamental grasp of that. And so if you do have questions about that, um, let me know. All right, other questions? So in a nutshell, this is the principles of responsive web design using strictly HTML and CSS. Multiple CSS files with media queries that decides when we apply them. And keeping in mind that more than one CSS file can apply in any given situation and we can add stuff onto it and so on. I don't know if, strictly speaking, the web development community considers scripting-based solutions still responsive design or something else, but the end effect is that it's responsive, so I'm, I'm going to consider them responsive design. And, and again, keep in mind that we can have scripting both on the client side and on the server side. Um, and we'll look at examples. Um, we'll look at an example of some client-side coding uh, to do that. Now, the issue with client-side coding, remember, and again, we talked about the tool in the book, and there's some other tools as well, um, is that um, if you're putting it in the HTML and changing the page via client-side scripting, you're likely to be downloading that code anyhow. Again, unless you do something really tricky, like you could swap an image out if you're on a desktop. And we might play around with that uh, if, if we have time today, just to talk about that particular uh, technique. All right. But again, in, in the book it shows, I think there's something that shows how you can resize an image, a tool for that. And I think there's another tool for determining what all gets downloaded. So take a look at those in the book. All right. Here's an example I used, actually, I used a couple semesters back. Um, a JavaScript example uh, of some responsive coding. And I want to go over this, and then I want to extend it uh, a little bit and talk about something like maybe how we could swap out an image uh, to keep the original from downloading. All right. And this page is like this. And I was actually getting a little silly here. Or I actually make it really responsive and actually make it change the color. That's probably not a valid thing to do or a good thing to do. But it does illustrate the fact that I can change just about anything I want to about the, the, the page via JavaScript. All right. So, let's see the code to do this. All right. I don't have a separate CSS file. I have a JavaScript function that part of which I wrote, part of which I borrowed from this source. And we'll review that in, in a second. And then I simply have two divs, one of which has an ID of important, one of which has an ID of less important. Now, if you remember from what we talked about in 2.16, JavaScript is typically invoked when the user, create, uh, when the user makes some action. All right? And usually it's things like they put their mouse on something or they click a button, or they type in something on the keyboard. This particular one, the JavaScript is triggered by two events. One of them is the onload event. 
And that onload event is when the page finishes loading based on the initial request of the user. So in other words, onload will go and it will <coughs> fire off this, step, this um, function, this JavaScript function I have, when the page finishes loading. The reason why oftentimes you put JavaScript to be initiated in an onload event is you want to make sure that the whole page loads first. Keep in mind that JavaScript's purpose is to manipulate the stuff that's on your page. Well, you don't want JavaScript manipulating stuff on the page if that stuff isn't on your page yet, if the HTML file is still loading. So as the browser is loading it, you don't want it doing JavaScript commands, attempting to do things to things on the page that aren't there yet. All right. So therefore, instead of simply having this script embedded to you know execute as the page is loading, I execute it on the add load event, which guarantees that that uh, that uh, function won't get executed until the page is completely loaded. The other time that I invoke the same function is on resize. And just as you would think, the on resize relates to when the page gets bigger, when the page gets smaller. Both onload and on resize calls my function named redisplay. All right, redisplay. Let's see what that function does. The function to review JavaScript is in a script tag. The script tag is sort of like the style tag. The difference being that the style tag tells the browser you're not in HTML land, but you're in CSS land, whereas the script tag tells the browser you're not in HTML land, but you're in JavaScript land. So I have a script tag. Inside it, I have a function. Function is just a name that I'm going to give to a chunk of code. So I have function, redisplay, parentheses. That indicates I don't have any arguments. I don't pass any parameters when I call this function. I'm simply calling this function. That, of course, has to match the name that I called it here. And again, empty parentheses because I'm not passing any arguments to it. I'm not passing any extra parameters to it. I'm just saying go ahead and redisplay it. And it's case sensitive. So if I made this a capital D redisplay, it wouldn't work because it's case sensitive. It has to match it. So the word function, redisplay, parent, you know, pair of parentheses. I then have the brace, the curly bracket, that goes around the contents of the function. All right. Essentially, this block of code that's gray is the body of that function. All these instructions get executed when I call the function that's named redisplay. So redisplay effectively is simply a name I've given to all these lines of code. So anytime I want to do that, I just say, go do that redisplay routine. And it will do all those lines of code. That way I don't have to worry about duplicating the code and putting a code in a couple different places. I define a function, I give a function a name, then whenever I want to call it, I simply give the name of the function to call that function whether it be on the on load or on the um, on resize, and it will go and do this code. Questions about that and functions? That pretty clear? Uh, I, I know some of you have not had JavaScript. Uh, some of you have done some other coding though, so the, the notion of a function is pretty pretty familiar to you. Um, 
Keep in mind JavaScript, the purpose of JavaScript is to make changes to a web page that's already been loaded. So this code is going to do something to the existing page, all right, based on certain things, all right. Specifically, it is based on the width of the page, all right. Now, the code from here to here, I can't take credit for. It's from this site. You would think that determining how wide the window is and how tall the window is would be something that's easy. Oh, it's not. Depending on the kind of browser you have and if it's an old browser or a new browser, if it is IE or Chrome or Firefox, depending on all these different factors, you actually, there's different tests to determine what the width of the of the window is. And this function accommodates that. Our takeaway from this, and again, this looks at different aspects of the page. This looks at different aspects of the DOM. And based on that, it, it determines the manner in which it's going to determine what the width of the page is. All right. The takeaway from this is when we are done, we have two variables. One is WinW and one is WinH. The window's width and the window's height. When we're done, those variables contain the width and the height. And again, I haven't tested this on literally every browser, but it seems to work pretty well. So they seem to have their code down so that regardless of your browser, it determines properly the width and height of the page. All right? Is that, that's, it's, it's resizing based on the size of the browser that you have, like currently, or is that what I'm getting, or? Well, keep, no, this isn't resizing at all. This is just determining how big the window is at this point in time. Okay. All right? So, in other words, that window is maybe 800 pixels wide. Right. As I move this in and out, that on resize event is firing off. Right. Because I, again, the whole idea of JavaScript is the user does something, the page responds back right. to it. So this portion of the script simply determines how wide the window is. It doesn't make any of the changes yet. That's the part of code that I borrowed from someone. Because again, that, if you look at that, that's not something that's straightforward. Someone spent hours tinkering with this and figured out the way to do it, so I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I'm going, to, I'm going to use the code that they've made public on the web. They're encouraging you to use it, and therefore I'm going to do that. Now, the portion of this that's my code is this. And what I'm doing is, is I have an if statement here that tests to see if the width of the window is less than 400. If it is less than 400, then what am I going to do? I am going to find a thing on the page that has an ID of less important. I'm going to change its style. Specifically, I'm going to set the, set the visibility of it to hidden. All right. As you're working through JavaScript, you're going to see statements that look like this, or that start with this an awful lot. Yeah. Document dot get element by ID. Keep in mind the purpose of our JavaScript. Our JavaScript is to make changes to a page that's already been loaded. So what we want to do is we want to point to the different elements of the, on the page that we want to change. In this case, we want to change that second div, that div that has an ID of less important, and sometimes we want to hide it, sometimes we want to show it. All right, so as this gets smaller, it disappears. This gets bigger, it reappears. So, 
Before we can change something on the screen, we have to point to it. Because the script doesn't know what it is we want to change. We can't just say, I want to make, make the div disappear. Well, there's a bunch of divs on this page, or at least a couple divs on this page. Which div do we want to get rid of? Which div do we want to make disappear? Well, we want to get rid of the one that has an ID of less important. All right? So we have to find that on the page, and we have to point to it. And that's what this part of the statement does. It says, find the thing on the page. Document means this web page. Find the thing on the page that has an ID of less important. So now, up to this point of the statement, we're pointing to this div as an ID of less important. Well, what are we going to do with that div? We're going to change the style. What about the style are we going to change? We're going to make the visibility of that hidden. All right. So, we have a condition. The way if statements work in JavaScript is we have a condition inside the parentheses that evaluates to either true or false. In this case, we're asking if the width of the window which is what this, fun this part of the function gives us, the width and height of the window. If the width of the window, the window's width, is less than 400, I want to point to the thing on the page that has an ID of less important, and I want to change something about it. What do I want to change about it? I want to change its style. What about the style? I want to change the visibility. What do I want to set the visibility to? I want to set it to hidden. Now, an if statement, again, can either be true or false. This is what we do if it's true. This else is what we do if the if statement is false. So if the window is not less than 400 pixels wide, then we want to make, we want to do the same thing. We want to point to that less important div, and we want to change the style, specifically as visibility, and we want to set it equal to visible. Now, that's the part that I, that, that's probably the important part of this one, because this is really the responsive part. <coughs> what I did throw in for laughs, a little bit of monkeying around with that other div. And I really only did that simply to show you that via JavaScript, really you can manipulate anything you want to about the page. Right, so I can change anything about a particular page. And so what I do is, this is not in the if statement, so this is not conditional. I do it every time the page resizes. I do a calculation of the width of the screen divided by 400, and I make the page that many M's. I make the font size, rather, for that div that many M's. So at 400 pixels, which is right around here, that's one M. If I made it about 800 pixels, which is about here, that would be two M, and so on. I also, just for laughs, put a little snippet of code here to change the color based on, and I simply took the width of the screen, which probably would run anywhere on this machine anyhow, from around 1,000 to zero. Well, the numbers for colors are typically zero to 255, so I figured, well, I'll take the width, divide it by four, and make it that shade of gray. All right, so as I resize it, the smaller the window's width gets, the darker gray, because the lower the width divided by four is going to be to the point where when it's real small, it's real dark. And when it's big, it's real light. Again, that was more or less just for fun. That was to illustrate the fact that we can go in and really change any aspect of the page. Questions about this? Uh, there is one thing I have. I, you know, regarding the, the visibility, like 
I see this a lot in responsive pages. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I see ones that when I squish the screen, and, you know, just the browser window, a picture like like you showed before, the picture vanishes. Everything kind of reflows accordingly. It was as if the picture was never there. But sometimes I occasionally see where the picture is no longer visible, but the space it occupied is still there. I mean, the picture is not seen, but I'm trying to get a handle on what is the difference between something being totally uh, invisible, but still somehow claim, still claiming its territory, so to speak, versus being utterly gone. Poof. And I don't know if there was any small little wording differences between visibility, display, hidden, that, because like I said, I have seen that issue on responsive pages several times uh, when it comes to imagery. Uh, well, I, I guess the sarcastic part of me wants to say the difference is, is one of the persons knows what they're doing, the other person doesn't. All right? <laughs> right? Because, I mean, kind of leaving a, a hole in your web page is, you know, like, why would you do that? What's, what's the purpose for that? I'm like so, so, so I guess, I guess that's my gut reaction. But the answer is, yeah, it depends how it's coded. And 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 let's go in just for laughs, and let's put in a, a third div here. Let's change this to thirty percent. Let's put a third div here. So there we have our first div, our second div, and our third div. Now, so we get smaller. Do, 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 do. Ooh, looks what happens. I don't know what I'm doing, right? Because I have a gap. All right. So to answer your question, if I make it invisible, it's there. It's just not visible. All right. So how do I get it? How would I get it where it would truly not be there? I can do that via, I could, I could say, Now, in this case, I didn't have that problem initially because there's nothing else there to show that there was a hole. All right. Now, as I resize this, that guy disappears, and boom, the div is right on top of it. So there's a difference between a visibility of hidden and a display of none. A display of none, it doesn't exist. A visibility of hidden, it um, is there. It's just it's just invisible. You know, <laughs> be like the difference between if Claude Rains, the Invisible Man, was standing there, or if he wasn't there at all. Right? The display of none means says it's not there at all. You know, would still bump into him if he was there and invisible. Boy, that was a bad analogy. Actually, no, I, I, it's actually pretty good. Actually, <laughs> I, I brought it up because, like I said, I have seen pages yeah. that you change the screen with, and right. a picture goes bye bye, but its uh, real yeah. estate is still and, there. And again, I, I mean, I, I couldn't think of a reason why I'd want to do that, so. Again, in this case, it really didn't matter because there was nothing like to interfere with it. There was nothing to show the fact that there was actually something invisible there. So, uh, 
in other cases, though, like when we added that third div, it became apparent that, gee, I probably want to do a display none. The other thing I've done in the past is um, I've set the visibility. Uh, you, you can also set the visibility to hidden and like set the width to like zero pixels. And, and that would kind of do the same thing. But display and none is probably a better approach. Now, one thing I talked about before is I talked about, and, and this I think is important to understand both from the perspective of JavaScript programming and from the perspective of understanding how the page and the browser and the server interact. Okay? If you remember before, I said if we had an image, we could hide the image based on our CSS or based on JavaScript but we've still downloaded that image. All right. So let's go and do that. Let's take this example and play with it a little bit so that I put an image on here and I hide the image um, if, uh, if, if it's a smaller window screen. Smaller, smaller window. All right, let me copy this. And let me grab an image. Fall image from example should do. All right, let's go here and put this image in here. Image source equals autumn.jpg I think. All equals picture of autumn. Alright, let me make sure it worked. And let me give this an ID. I'm going to need an ID, right, because I'm going to need a hook to grab onto it be my JavaScript. So I'll give an ID of fall pick. I guess it doesn't matter what it is. Let's save it. And bring it up. All right. And there we go. There it is. And if I bring it up in my mobile emulator, right now I haven't done anything to hide it if it's a, 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 a mobile device. So therefore, um, I'm going to see it. So I'll go and put it here, and there I see it. I do want to also copy over this line of code to set sort of the initial zoom. Say six hundred pixels. 